Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today I got another integral that I found on the channel, Methalysis World. It's been a few days since he posted his, uh, so I believe at the time that this posts, it will be uh, three or four days after he posted his, so I won't be stepping on his toes too much. Um, again, I always, I try to never directly copy somebody's solution. Uh, my solution, the, the way I get there is much different from the way he gets there. Of course, we get the same answer, uh, which is um, a, uh, I believe the answer is actually a Perry's constant, which is uh, this sum, which is zeta of three. Um, I don't like to refer to things. Uh, I don't like to use special functions or special constants. I would prefer to just leave it like this, but I've gotten enough comments where I'm, I'm going to give in and I'm going to start using some of those uh, special constants. I know I've already used several of them, like, um, um, oh, what's that one? I forget. I'll, I'll remember later. Um, what is it? That's going to drive me nuts. Now I'm not going to be able to concentrate on what I'm doing. Uh, okay. It's the one that involves the Gaussian integral. Um, I'll think of it later. Okay, so let's just get started with this. Um, so the first thing I would like to do is derive a formula for natural log 1 over x, uh, derive an infinite sum for natural log 1 over x. And to do that, we'll use this. We know that the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 minus x is equal to x that's wrong. The sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n, x to the n, is equal to 1 over 1 minus x on negative 1 to 1. So if we integrate this term by term, or anti, I should say anti-differentiate this term by term, we should get to the, we, we should get the antiderivative of this. So if we antiderivative anti-differentiate this term by term, we get x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 should be equal to the antiderivative of this, which is, of course, natural log, or negative natural log 1 minus x plus c. So negative natural log 1 minus x plus c. Uh, now, we want this to be true for all x, so um, if that, that means if we plug in 0, we want, to, this, we want this side to be 0. If we plug in 0 for x, this side has to be equal to 0. So if we did that, we'd get the sum of, from n to infinity of 0, which is just 0, is equal to negative natural log 1, which is 0. In other words, we get 0 is equal to c. Uh, so we can just go ahead and erase that. And this, well, I'll write it like this. I'll put this negative on the other side. That is true. Um, and then I will increase the index on n by 1 so I can subtract 1 from all the n's inside the sum. So this is our equality that we will be using. And now we will create a function of t like this. It will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1, I'm going to have to get some new pens really soon, new markers, um, of x to the t times uh, the natural log of 1 minus x dx. Okay. Um, and that converges, I, I, I don't believe there are, let's see, that should converge for all t, all, all t um, in the real numbers, I believe. Let me think about that for a second. Uh, we can plug in 0, we can plug in 1. Um, yeah, that, that's, yeah, no, that, that should be fine. Okay, um, well, definitely for all t um, uh, greater than or equal to 0, which is is what we're concerned with anyway. Uh, negative, uh, negative t is probably not, because then you'd get a, 
an X in the denominator and it might not converge if you do that. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's definitely good for T uh, greater than or equal to zero. Um, all right. So if that's our F of T, um, we can say that I is equal to F prime at negative one. I hope you can see that. Um, if we took the derivative with respect to t using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, well, let me just let me just state what that would actually be. All right. So to make it really clear for everybody, f prime of t using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, we would get the integral from zero to one of um, x to the t natural log x, natural log one minus x dx. So we could see that i is also equal to f prime at negative one, because we would have natural log one minus x, natural log x, and if we put a negative one in for our t, we just get over x. So let's say i is equal to f prime at negative one. All right, now let's rewrite our f of t using this sum. All right, so our f of t, and I'll call it f sub s of t, uh, that's equal to the integral from zero to one of the sum going from one to infinity of x to the n over n, well actually negative, x to the n over n times x to the t, which we will just, we'll express our x to the t as an addition to our exponent on x inside the sum, and then dx. Okay. Uh, there's not going to be any problems switching the bounds of integration and summation here, I don't think. Um, no, th this thing would, this thing is definitely, it's, it's definitely integra integrable from zero to one, uh, no problem. And the result, uh, if you do that, definitely converges from n equals one to infinity, so... No problem there, so I'll just do this right now. So this is the integral from zero to one summed from n equals one to infinity. Evaluating this integral will give us uh, one over n times n plus t plus one. Okay, but we are not interested in f of t, we want f prime of t. So let's just go ahead and take a derivative uh, right now. That's going to add a squared here, and it will introduce a negative sign. All right, um, and now if we evaluate this at t is equal to negative 1, we see that i is equal to f prime sub s of t. And that's, uh, I'm sorry, negative one. And that is the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n cubed. And that's it. That's a Perry's constant. All right, guys. There's, uh, there's my solution for that integral. Hope you enjoyed that.